Hi, everybody. It's Magic Monday today, and I am here with Sun Psychic Jean. Hi, Hi everybody. Thank you for having me, Terry. Well, I, it's not, you know, thank you for having me too. This is just our, our, <laughs> our partnership, and normally we'd have Joan on as well, but she is a little busy today. So, but thank She'll you. She'll be back you. next time. Yeah. 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 Yeah, well, it's, um, I don't know how it is in your area, but it's just a little bit misty and rainy here um, in the Pacific Northwest. How How is it going out on the other coast? It is bright and sunshine, nice blue skies and sunshine. Look, you can't even see my finger. Yep. Wow. Brightly, mm -hmm, brightly sunshining out there. Very nice out there today. So it's, it's a little chilly. It's in the 40s, so it is quite chilly, mm -hmm. but it's a beautiful day. Mm -hmm. Any day that with the sun shining, it's beautiful. Yeah. And um, I just want to let everybody know that we are coming on just a few minutes early to say hello to everybody and uh, come on over and uh, say hello. Um, yeah. Hi, Mary Ellen's here and Pooja's here. Wow. So Terry, you, you had a, a, a very busy weekend and I'm telling you guys, if anybody's thinking about getting a reading with Terry, get a reading with her now. She just finished an amazing, um, uh, psychic fair, right? That's what yeah. you call them. It was a metaphysical and wellness fair. Yeah. And she is just on fire right now. So, um, now is a really good time to connect with Terry and you, you still have your website, um, uh, Kigaroo spiritual journeys for them. I do. I'm trying to improve it. Um, like try to make the categories a little less wild and scattery. Um, but the re the, the reality of it is that if you book me and if you book me, I'll read in whatever mode you want. You don't have to really, you know, say, oh, I only want psychic medium or I only want past life or I only want an Akashic reading. And I kind of read in all the modes if you want. So. Yep. Same here. Same here. I agree. Yeah. The only thing I think, well, there's a couple of them that we would need to know ahead of time. Um, and you can just let us know when we first, when you first uh, come on to the, to the uh, meeting there. Hi, David. Nice to see you. Uh, Warrior Girl is here and Nehru is here. Hi, everybody. Thanks for coming. So we're doing Magic Monday uh, on a little bit of a round robin type of format. So one week it'll be on Jones, one week it'll be on mine, one week it'll be on, on Terry's. So we're doing a little bit of round robin uh, for, a, for a while. We really like it when the chat is together, when the chat is... Everybody can see what uh, what other people are saying and everybody is able to collaborate together in the same chat rather than having it spread across three channels. Right. So that's that's why we're not we're not simulcasting this time. Uh, probably on all the shows we appear together on. We're not going to simulcast for a couple months because we we just we want everybody in the chat together. It's it's. It's so much fun. And I noticed that when I've gone to shows where it's a simulcast and maybe I haven't gone to the host of the show, then sometimes I'm all alone. I'm just all alone there. And, you know, not, not, I, I say something and nobody responds. And that's, that's when you know you're in a simulcast. <laughs> <laughs> um, Aww. Yeah. yeah. Meaning so, not nobody else in this chat would respond. Right. Not, right, not, because maybe yeah. I'm the only one on that channel or or I'm trying to I'm seeing the chat, but I'm and I'm trying to chat back, but nobody's responding. It means it's because I'm on a different channel, mm. on a different simulcast. And that's mm -hmm. that uh, doesn't doesn't uh, feel great. Right. And especially with the way that we are. um we're raising our vibration and we're moving into that altered state of consciousness. And we know that you all like to be there together and raise your vibration and your state of consciousness with us as a support. And we can really feel it uh, when everybody's together do doing the same thing. Now in other formats and maybe on a different day or on a different show, we may go back to simulcasting. It's not, this is not the, the final decision. This is just what we want to do with this show for right now. 
Yeah. Right. See how everybody likes it. See if yeah. everybody, um, it's just real important to have people together, especially with the energy. Um, yeah. And uh, what I've noticed over time, Jean, is that a lot of the people that have been in our chat, especially before they started simulcasting, because that's a relatively new thing, uh, a lot of them practice their own gifts in the chat and are now hosting their own shows. So that, <laughs> you know, that's cool. I like it when that we're all supporting each other. So that's really lovely. Oh, Rossi's here. Hi, Rossi. Hi, Rossi. So uh, um, just to take up a tiny bit of time, let people get here. Um, yeah, I had a MeWe Fair in Seattle, Washington this weekend. And um, I had a booth and people could book me and get a 25-minute uh, reading. And uh, I would read psychically or as a medium or Akashic Records. And then I signed up to uh, read a room for an hour each day. So a little like what we're doing now, that's what reading a room is like. It's just answering questions on the fly. Um, but it was fun because one day, the first day, I didn't have a huge audience in there. So I just told people what I could do. And then I quizzed them. How many of you want a psychic medium reading ship? How many of you want Akashic Records? They all wanted Akashic Records. So that's what we did. And it was fun. <laughs> that's amazing. That's really, that's, it's amazing. You are an inspiration. And um, I think that somebody had commented that they never knew that you could do Akashic Records live in front of many people. And Terry's like, sure, of course you can. And they're like, what? <laughs> <laughs> oh, here's Wiki. Wiki came to the show. Wiki and oh. Nico. Wiki yes. and Nico. Yep. Oh, are they Wiko now? Nico is, is the is her puppy's name. I know, but are they a thing, a one thing, a week ago now? Oh, <laughs> like a better oh, for God. like a like a week ago. <laughs> I don't know, Wiki. Well, what do you think? Is uh, a week ago okay? <laughs> I I won't show you uh, Wiki because it you know I don't want to out her. But look, look at this cute little. Baby. Oh, he's so <laughs> precious. Oh, oh the sweetest little doggy. Oh my gosh. And that was just, that was so much fun. Um, Tell well, us a little bit about uh, the gentleman who sat down and you, you did like an energy reading for him and we won't say his name or anything, but, um, and you kind of felt sort of what his soul's essence was. I thought that was amazing. Can you tell us a little so, bit about that? So one of my readings, actually, I had about three first time readings where they'd never been read before. And um, for me, that kind of gives me a little bit of pause sometimes because I'm like, I can't unleash the full Terry on them. Um, <laughs> so uh, he was such a lovely gentleman. And he didn't really know what he wanted. In fact, I think he got forced by his wife to do this. But um, so he he really didn't have an idea. So I just tapped in as a psychic medium, just tapped in to to him to find out, you know, a little bit more. And they the the angels and spirit guys did this lovely, lovely thing where they just showed me his spirit his energy and he's just a nice guy he's such a nice guy and they showed me how that you know that he somehow I mean I don't I don't know for sure but they showed me he's kind of in upper management or even an owner of a business and they showed me why he's so good at it and why people like him why people want to work for him and it just probably, and, and it, it, they also told me that he knows when something's wrong, when something uh, could, could go wrong in a project. He, he's able to kind of psychically see this. And um, 
he usually speaks up, but not always because he he's he's worried about how is he going to explain how he knows this. And um, they told him to be more confident, to have more confidence in his abilities to do that, because it's proven time and time again that he's right, and he saves his team's butts. He does. He really saves them a lot of problems. Oh. <laughs> Oh, so it seems like uh, Wiki saying the little dog was asleep in two minutes in the car when she left. Oh. But anyway, this this energy, it was just an energetic reading that just kind of sh took took the mask off and said, this is who you are. This is this is what you're doing. And this is why people love you. And uh that is so much, it was so important for him to see, have that mirror, to have that validated and spoken back. Like so many people walk around and thinking, is this true? Could this be really why? And and why, I wonder why everybody, you know, and you think about these things and you wonder about these things. And if somebody puts a mirror up to you and says, this is what I see, this is who you are, this is your soul's essence. And this is what he really needed to hear at that time. And we always say, um, we uh, our intention is to provide uh, information that is most important for you to learn and that is for your highest good. And I really felt like that was something that it was really important for him to hear at that moment in that time. It was it was uh, really very uh, profound, very profound and very generous and, and loving. And uh, well, you know, it'll carry a long way. It'll take them, yeah. And it's a really good example for those of you in the audience who might not be sure what to ask. You don't even know what to ask. Just ask for an energy reading or a general read like Angie has done. So, in fact, are you ready to read a few questions? Yeah, let's get started. Okay, well, let's, let's actually start with Angie. Okay. And we'll take my banner off here. Thank you. Okay. I feel like I'm so, in a bus sometimes. <laughs> I know. <laughs> um, so Andy, sorry, Angie wants to know, may I please ask what the universe wants me to know? Thank you. And, and usually, just so people know, usually we like a more specific question, but this is a perfectly good question as well. To, we're just going to do like a little energy read on you. Yeah, especially for the first question, or if you're new, or if you don't really have any loved ones on the other side that you want to connect with, or, you know, you just want something general, or you want to know, uh, like, you're, you're just a little bit more about yourself, about your soul, and your, um, your, I don't know, your, your energy. And this, it just, it really is a, a beautiful thing. And I really love to do this when I meet somebody for the first time. But I wouldn't recommend saying this, like, every single show. <laughs> yeah. um, but. I'm just going to shout out to me. Hi, Maya. Hi, Arlene. Glad you're here. Okay. Okay. And, and just, you know, go anytime you get something. So Angie, I'm not sure it's, uh, they're showing me a, a, a finger puppet and not a finger puppet this way, a finger puppet this way. And I'm not sure how you would do it. I think you would do it like this, like the two hands and then that. So I'm not sure if you have ever had, or if that makes any sense to you, a finger puppet where the two hands would clap and the head would be up top. I feel as though um, there is something about uh, being a puppet or feeling like a puppet. Um, yeah, I feel like you need to, or if you feel you might need to perform for other people, 
I feel as though you are, um, you have some skills and you have some abilities and, and people are like, Angie, do this, or Angie, play the piano, or Angie, sing a song. And like they, they would like, uh, people would want to encourage you to perform in front of other people. And you feel as though uh, you you could be a, a puppet of some sort. Um, when really you just want, you just want to um, do what makes your soul feel uh, whole. Uh, like you want to, if you, if they're making you do something, you want to do it when you want to do it, when your soul feels it's, it's needed. It's like, it's like an expression for you. It's not something that's on demand that, that you need to perform or to, to appear in, in a certain way, you do it as a form of soul expression. It's not something that can be bought and paid for. It's just a natural organic thing with you. Um, let me know if anything makes sense there, uh, Angie. How about you, uh, Terry? Um, well, I'm virtually getting the very same reading, but it's coming with different things. First of all, I saw a sun, a star that is a sun, not not our sun, but it, it's a star, and I'm like, or but it's a it's a sun, and I'm like, is there such thing as sun seeds? Because I was thinking maybe that, and then I I looked a little bit more, I looked a little bit more, and I said, is she a celebrity or somebody acting? And then you said that, <laughs> and uh, I um somehow I'm getting this same thing that you are on the stage right now, you're acting, but I think that I'm also detecting that that part of this is, is that you have a natural attraction. People are attracted to you. People want to hear from you. People want to see you. You, you may be more animated than other people and people just enjoy seeing you and interacting with you. But here's the message. They said that that is all true, but you are enough. You, the soul of Angie, are enough. You don't have to feel bad if you don't want to perform for others. You don't have to feel bad if that you feel like others are judging you for not being a certain way. You are you and you are enough. We value you for who you are. And they're just kind of showing me your soul energy, the bright light that's kind of coming out of your soul. You are you and you are completely enough. And they would like to work more with you. That, that's what I got. Did you get anything more? So Angie says, wow, I resonate with both messages. Could this be related to the travel YouTube channel I was thinking of starting? Yeah, I think so. I got, I got like, you know, a, a uh, personality, you know, a person on a stage, a star. Why not? Why not start your own channel? And, and it's like, um, you want to do, if you want to do it, you want to do it your way. And if you want to do it, you want to do it without any parameters or expectations, you want to do it from your heart and, um, in a creative way, you are creative. And this is what you want to do is express yourself through this, this medium, whatever it is that you do, you want to express yourself and this, you want it to be natural and organic. You don't want to have to set a schedule. You don't want to have to be on every Tuesday. You don't want to have to be on, you know, you want to do things organically as your heart feels filled to do it. And you're very ex excited and you want to do it and you're, you're willing to, to take the steps to do it, but you don't want it to become a job. You want it to become, you want it to be exactly what it is. So is Angie's um, travel YouTube channel, is that in Andy's, Angie's highest good? Yes, it is very much a yes for sure. Wow. Yeah. Well, let us know. I'll watch it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Can you imagine? Oh, my gosh. 
That's lovely. Going around and, and uh, filming your travels. That would Beautiful. be so much fun. That would be fun. Um, we're going to move on. Oh, thank you, Angie, for giving us your question. I'm going to go to Janet DC. She says, I think I'm getting messages when I do Reiki. Recently with a friend, Diana, and then with my cat, who is pictured. Cute little cat. Uh, did, did I? My cat sent me a weird image. I got words in my mind with Diana. Any advice? Uh, yeah, absolutely, Janet. You are psychic. These are your psychic skills. And when I uh, was attuned with Reiki, I, that's when I started really getting a lot of messages and information and my psychic skills really picked up. And it's your, it's your training to uh, connect to the energy that you're working on with Reiki. Uh, when you said when I do Reiki, um, it's you're do you're actually performing. You're the Reiki uh, provider, and you're doing Reiki. Yeah, of course. So if you're doing it on your cat, so as as a Reiki uh, practitioner, you it's re you're required to tune into that subtle energy. And when you do, you have to raise your consciousness and your vibration to feel and to sense the subtle energy. And your psychic skills are also subtle energy and you're tuning in uh, to that realm or that frequency. And this is where you can get those messages. So anybody want to practice their psychic skills, just pretend like you're doing some Reiki. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> yeah, I would highly recommend doing a Reiki course. And um, Allie Heart and Soul Connected has also said after her Reiki course, it's, it's really come much more, much, uh, naturally, more naturally for her. And she can hear and sense and feel things a little easier because they, they teach you how to focus in on that subtle energy when we do Reiki. And then when you have the attunement, it opens up the connection and um, it really makes a big difference. I'm going to um, ask my pendulum. Uh, if what basically I want to know if Diana should if that the, she should say something to the person she's doing Reiki with about what what she's receiving. Hmm. Um, I got a yes on that, um, but I also felt like a yes as needed. You know, like you, you have to know the person you're working with and whether sharing it would freak them out or help them. So. And Janet, you could do a remote session with Reiki and also do a little bit of psychic. You can say, if I pick up anything on a psychic level, do you want me to tell you or do you want to hear it? And just ask them. And uh, you can that that's a good way to practice your psychic skills. Um, so she did that say that nice. I want to hear about the image from the cat. Um, so are you asking her to tell us about the image from the cat? Here she says, uh, the image from the cat was a soft finger like things. So like you might see in the ocean. Uh, it hit my mind hard. Like it was shouting soft finger like things. Maybe that was a toy that your cat liked, but um, okay. Um, she, she did say that she did tell Diana what she got, and the confirmation was accurate. And she, Diana's a good friend, so she knows her well. Wonderful. Yeah, I, it's definitely an opening for you, Janet. And you, we are all. We all have psychic abilities. It just matters how much we practice. And if you're doing this Reiki practice frequently, you'll strengthen your psych your psychic skills as well. And there's there's no stopping you now because once that once that floodgate is open, you'll you'll be able to pick up on a lot of things. I would I, I would highly recommend getting a pendulum or using your your cards and um, just so you can validate it for yourself. Yeah. I love that. That's great advice, Jean. 
That is lovely. Okay, so let's see here. Let me uh, clean up my questions here just a tidge. Yeah. Um, okay. I had a wonderful visit with Allie yesterday and I was on with um, Ginger Faye and we did our, our dragon show yesterday, which was a lot of fun. And we're going to do one more, the last one for the dragon show. We're going to be doing dragon readings and maybe telling you a little bit about what we might pick up uh, about your personal dragons. Because everybody wants, wants to know about their personal dragon. So the last show, that's what that'll be about. I'm really looking forward to it. That That is going to be exciting. And I'm going to go watch it because <laughs> of the fair, I encountered a dragon. So now I'm really curious. <laughs> A real one. <laughs> I, well, that was that was unusual. Very unusual. Well, and that sounds like a very exciting show. Uh, so Sharon O'Brien would love to hear from her grandfathers, Fred and Paul. Okay. I'm feeling like there's a gentleman stepping forward and he's saying that he was a very hard worker. I feel like he worked long hours and I feel like he didn't get a long, um, a long retirement. You know how we work our entire lives and we, we look forward to those last 20 years of life in retirement and doing what we love and fishing and things. He worked very hard and long hours and I'm not sure. Hmm, I don't, I see him going, like traveling back and forth to work. I'm not sure if he worked in transportation or if he worked in, in trains or, or mechanics or something. It was long and hard and it was like dirty. He may have been a mechanic of some sort, um, something where he, he would get dirty when he worked. And um, so we, he would come home exhausted, like physically exhausted and he would dream about retirement is what he's telling me. And he's saying that he, he was a very hard worker and a very proud man. He said, I didn't complain at all. He really loved watching uh, the family get together and those moments when the dinners were on the table and the family was all together and everybody having fun. He felt like all of his hard work was, was worth it and that he could provide for his family. He was a very proud man, uh, but he is telling me that he didn't get to reap some of those re rewards uh, as much towards the end of his life and that his retirement was cut short, he's saying. And, um, but he wouldn't trade a minute of it because all of the hard work and all of the long hours and the long commute was worth it to see his family grow up. Oh my gosh, he was so selfless very selfless. And he just wanted, he would give the shirt off his back for somebody just to, just to see the smiles and listen to the kids giggle and run around the house when, when they had family dinners together. It was, it was like everything that was everything to him. Wow. Very nice man. That's amazing. I need a tiny bit of uh, help from her. So I feel like I have Fred and Paul here. They're sitting on a stone wall together. I doubt they were friends in real life, but up there, they do like sitting together and they're laughing like maniacs. So one, so this is what I want to know. One seems a little taller and they're, I'm seeing them as old men and one seems a little shorter. He was a little bald with, you know, you know the bald guys that have a little fluff of hair that's always going the wrong way, no matter, it's, it's sticking up no matter what they're doing. One of them has... The, the fluff that's sticking out no matter thing. They are laughing like maniacs. I'm having a hard time getting their attention. Um, that Sharon, that would be nice to know if if I am seeing them and it would kind of be nice to know which is which because they're not telling me because they're laughing. Um, okay, guys, come on, come on.
and by shorter, I don't mean a lot shorter, just one seems to be a more tall, taller, one seems a little shorter. The shorter one is the more laughy one. He's just laughing. He's he's so tickled. He's tickled by you. He's tickled by just being over there. He can't believe how easy this is. He can't believe. Oh, he can't believe he's uh, Fred was bald with the white fringe. Okay, that's Fred. That's Peter. Okay. Okay, good. Okay, Fred, I am going to nominate you to do the talking. So, Fred, tell me a little bit about why you're laughing so hard, please. Um, he is laughing at himself about the idea of retirement. He didn't get very much time. Neither of them, it seems, got too much time in retirement. And yet they're retired over there. They just get to watch you and others and just be around and be part of people's life in a very different way than they expected. Um, he's saying something like, I can't believe I fell for it. And I think what he's talking about is that, you know, some people think we're in a matrix. And maybe that's what he's talking about. He just can't believe he he fell for it. Fred was a silly one. Okay. Yeah. yeah. He owned gas stations and a fireman. He died in his 60s. Wow. wow. Yeah. Well, it's funny because he's actually showing me a man that looks a little older than that. But if he's such a hard worker like that, maybe he looked a little older in his 60s. So, um, okay. Well, that's what I'm getting from Fred. He's a, he's happy, silly. He's laughing with Peter. They're so happy to be interacting with us from a different perspective. So, say thank you, Sharon, for for sharing them with us and he is Fred is quite a card. Mhm. Mm mhm. Mm yep. Yep. That's um So let's see what I think he he's just trying he wants you to know not to put off till tomorrow what you can do today that that uh life is short and um mm -hmm. try not to let your own uh fears or um ideas of things stop you from doing what you'd like to do. Um, you know, sometimes throw caution to the wind and and go for it uh, just for the experience because, you know, that's all, we only have this life to live, right? Right. And um, we want to make the most of it. And it's important to do what you really love and what you really, uh, what really uh, makes your heart sing. You know, if it's being generous to other people, if it's volunteering at a, you know, old folks home or if it's, you know, um, walking dogs or wh whatever it might be, it, whether it's starting a YouTube channel, whatever it is that you feel that you want to do to express yourself and make your heart sing, it's better to do it now and not and not have the regret later. This is what he's saying, that he always had the pie in the sky dream of that retirement and he, but he doesn't regret it because he said it was worth um, seeing the the children laugh and or hearing the children laugh, and um, that it was worth it. That it's not like he missed out on anything. But he's encouraging you not not that anything's going to happen at all. He's just saying in this life it's important to go ahead and do what makes your heart sing. Right. Yeah, I kind of, I kind of felt like he's saying you you know more now. Them, I knew then I was waiting for it. You don't have to wait for it. Do what makes your heart sing. Go ahead and do it. Because, uh, and as Jean said, this is the only time you get to be, you know, Sharon. You know, live Sharon all the way. So, this incarnation, right? Make the yeah. most of it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Well, thank you, Sharon, for, um, sharing them both with me. I'm sorry I didn't get anything from Peter, but they were laughing pretty hard, so. <laughs> um, okay, let's 
let's go to Pooja. Pooja would like to know what's coming up for my new career path. Pooja, just say hi and let us know that you're here. So in case we have any questions, yeah. um, what's coming next for my new career path? Are you in between jobs? Or are you just finishing school? Um, or my did you new just career start path. A new... Yeah, let us know. Let us know in the chat real quick. I'm going to just jump over here real quick because Sharon O'Brien gave us a little more feedback. Paul was a little taller, but died at 92. Oh, he lived to a long age. He was a mechanic, too, and did other odd jobs. Uh, and she does quite a few different odd jobs, too. Well, thank you for sharing that. Um, okay, we're going to go back to Pooja. Okay, so Pooja, if you're here, kind of just chime in real quick. We'll we'll give you a, a moment. Um, Maybe we can come back. Okay, let's let's just, come back. Pooja, mm -hmm. just say something, and we'll come back so we know that you're here, and let us know if. Uh, do you mean you've just changed a career path? You just graduated, you're starting a new job, or what's kind of going on? Okay, so we'll go to Nehru. Nehru would love to uh, see what messages her spirit guides have, or her, my, she says, my spirit guides have for me now. Wonderful. Just say hi, Nehru. It's real important that you guys are here in the chat because uh, we connect to your energy. Um, right. Um, Rishi, you didn't miss your turn. We just take the, oh, Nero's here. We just good. randomly pick the questions, but we do want you to be present. It's, it's a, very helpful. Okay. So Nero's here. Um, she would love, they would love to hear what messages their spirit guides have for them. They're telling me you're creative, that you have an artistic sort of drawing, coloring, uh, like colored pencil kind of thing. Um, um, you do, you have like a flair to your the way that you dress. You have a flair to the way that you, um, your, your uh, furnishings around your home. You have this uh, very artistic and it's really beautiful. It's delicate. It's, uh, it's purposeful. It's, um, it's refined. It's a very refined artistic flair. And whether it is that you actually do the art or you collect the art and, and, and uh, create things around you like this, it's a very refined artistic flair. It's a beautiful thing. Um, and they're just letting, oh, I'm seeing a cat too, a very furry, furry cat, mm. um, like uh, a lot of like those big hair kind of cats. And um, like you also see his eyes and a little nose and then just fur <laughs> or cat. cat. I don't know if it's hair or fur. I don't know. Um, <laughs> but I see a big furry cat and um, Miru, I see you wearing like a a sun hat and you have this like really gorgeous scarf that you put around the sun hat and the and the scarf like blows in the wind you just have like this very refined artistic flair about you you the way you dress your home furnishings the things i mean you really it's it's um it's quite delicate and i feel as though this is uh, comes from your past life i feel as though you were like they're telling me like a debutante and that you would, they would ask these women uh, in while as be, while you were a debutante to practice your um, artistic skills, practice your needlepoint skills, practice your musical skills. And this is what um, like women did to, as to pass the time when they were a debutante. Um, so you, this is what I'm feeling like this, this era or this feeling or this way of being like people around you, like you have friends that are like, they're like, Niru, 
my gosh, you really, <laughs> you really have some flair. And everybody else is sort of like wearing jeans or wearing hoodie sweatshirts or what, like kind of wearing sort of what everybody else is wearing. Not me, Rue. She's got that scar. She's got that flair. She's got that individual uh, beauty. And, and, uh, and it's just your way of expressing yourself. And they just want you to know that do more of this, do more of what makes you happy, do more of, of what makes your soul shine. And don't be afraid to be different. Um, but it's a beautiful thing, really beautiful. Yeah. To me, I see you on my stage and the representation of you is, is worrying. There, it's like rubbing their hands together and worrying and worrying. Um, and I see your guides coming in front of you and clasping your hands and trying to soothe your hands. And what they're saying is, uh, stop worrying so much. Don't, don't worry as much about the things, uh, the people, the kids, the everything. They're saying, stop worrying. Please flow with us. Please flow with us. Um, by, I believe by putting down some of these worries, that, that worrying will not change that you allow the flow of spirit to guide them and you allow to guide you and to guide those around you. Worrying won't stop what you're fearful of. Let go of the worries, let them take your hands and kind of draw you along into the flow. That's what I got. How beautiful. So thank you. So, thank you. Nero was just asking what the cat signified. I don't know. There was a random cat that came in. I don't know if it was yours or if it was from your past life, but I saw this rare, really fluffy cat and um, it's almost like uh, regal, like a regal cat. Uh, it, it signified regality. Um, and this was the refinement. This was the flair. This was the, you know, just the essence of what I was picking up. It could have been from your past life if you don't know of a cat in this lifetime like that. Well, she also says that she's going through an emotional time right now. And maybe that's good advice. Don't don't worry so much because there's you know you're worrying wears you out, but it doesn't help the situation. So thank you, Nero, for asking the question. We're very Happy, and I see that Pooja is here. So um, let's go to Pooja's question. Okay, so Pooja has asked, and didn't we wanted to know something more from them about yeah. that? Are you between uh, jobs, or are you just finishing school, and you're wondering what what job? from your schooling, if you can let us know that, Pooja. Yeah. Okay, I'm just going back through the message real quick to see if the, there's any information. Oh, here she goes. She's looking for a new career path. Okay. I see you being very patient and gentle with people. I see you being uh, almost a teacher, almost one uh, that has an ability to encourage others. You have a very uh, gentle approach. So uh, you could work with children or you could work with elderly. You could also work with pets, but I think children, I think you like to teach. I think you like to teach. You could be um, like a, a tutor in, in whatever it is that you just went to school for. You can tutor because you'd like to help people bridge the gap is what they're saying. And I don't say that. So you like to bridge the gap. Like they know how to do this part of it. 
but they don't know how to get to the end part. And you can bridge that gap. You can fill in the blank for them and they'll, and, and allow them to understand uh, fully what it is that they're, that they're trying to grasp. Well, Pooja, I'm I'm feeling very much similar things that that um, you have a lightness of spirit, somehow a lightness of spirit that makes it easy for you to bridge that gap. And what they were suggesting to me is that because that you're changing your career, because you're kind of adding to and kind of changing, kind of going through a new career path. And you may want to change. You may want to try out a few different things. Um, they are suggesting to me that nonprofit work is a good way to do that because you can work with nonprofits that work with seniors, that work with kids, that work with animals, and even within a nonprofit, there's many. There's IT. There's grant writing. There's working directly with people. Um, there's all sorts of opportunities there. Um, it, it's a way to get your foot in to learn something and then go and find a job that will pay better. Sorry, sorry to say that about nonprofits, but they don't pay as well. Um, but it's a great way to get experience under your belt and to try out your thoughts. You know, maybe you think, yeah, I really want to do X. And then you get in doing X and you find, oh, I don't like X that well. It's a great way to try something out without having to commit all the way. Okay, well, thank you so much for your question, Pooja. And um, I hope that helps you kind of find your way. Um, and I just want to say thank you very much to Sharon Sype. Thank you for being here. Thank you for watching our back and for popping up all of our information. That's really very sweet of you. We uh, uh, appreciate all the hard work and the dedication that you that you provide to all of the content providers. It's very nice. Okay, well, we have a question from Maya that is very, whoops, oh no. Well, Maya, I have lost your question. I'm so sorry. I will go get it, but in the meantime, let's read Mars. <laughs> um, so Mars wants, do my guides see any major changes in my spiritual or physical life this year? Definitely spiritual. And I think that it's connected in a way that uh, energies are, um, and it has a lot to do with all of humanity. We're all going through this cycle of death and rebirth, so, so to speak, that the old is dying off and the new is beginning again. And um, they're saying something like around April 1st, um, and there's there's a um, there's a force and there's a support for all of humanity um, to move forward in a higher frequency, and I feel as though this works on, for, on your behalf for spiritually as well as physically, and um, and it's that's one question. It's not two questions because you're going to learn, you do learn how to work with your guides and with your guidance in a, and bring it into this, um, into your everyday life, your spiritual path and your spiritual uh, um, messages you use in your everyday life. So one, they're one in the same. Um, but I feel as though whatever has happened in the past and this is for all of humanity in general, uh, is coming to an end. And there is a new energy coming in that 
it, or has been coming in that is moving us towards a um, a lighter, higher frequency and a more uh, with more self awareness. So with this self awareness, your spirituality uh, uh, opens up and increases, as well as your you can see physically um, around you what is in your highest good. You'll have this awareness to you that it'll work on both ends. I, I don't even know if I can say anything more because it's exactly the same thing I got that that these things are connected as you grow spiritually your body improves as well and um, one of the ways you can connect into this new grid is uh, two Tuesdays ago um, I did, I did a show with Val K, Dragonfly Crystals, and we introduced Metatron, the Archangel Metatron's new grid. And it is this new light coming in that's going to help us kind of complete this transition from where we are now kind of into more 5D, where that you're, where that you're valuing your senses. You're valuing the, the things that make you spiritual. Um, and that's what you might want to just watch at least the last half of it where the uh, Metatron kind of does a prayer and introduces it. That, that's kind of a great way to do that. But I do see that, that you are, things are improving for you this year. This, uh, it may not always be apparent. It may feel to you uneven, like, oh, I just spiritually learned something and Oh, but I'm not physically getting better, but it will slowly rise. They're, they're both going to keep rising at the same time. They're not always going to be doing it like this. It's going to be a little bit more like this. Um, Fascinating. Each, yeah. Each one brings a great change to the other. So lovely. Wow. She says, I feel like my tarot cards are talking to me. And then she says, new energy. So pleased. <laughs> yeah. That's very, very cool. Um, and keep up with your tarot cards. That's fabulous. Um, okay. I, let's see where. And she says, Metatron's grid. We'll watch. Thanks. Yep. Uh, mm -hmm. It's really, it's really cool. Okay. I found Mia's question. <laughs> I'm so sorry, Mia. I, I accidentally deleted it. Um, so Maya says, and she is here, uh, I feel like I'm at a crossroads with my career and different situations at home. I've been patient, I've been waiting patiently for signs or movement. Any guidance from my guides? Mm. I think uh, what I heard right away is that it, uh, trust in the divine timing, the crossroads with your career de depends on timing. And um, what I mean by that is it's not going to happen right away. They're working on setting it up and you'll know um, and you'll know you'll feel the nudge or you'll be pushed. <laughs> I've been pushed. She's been pushed. We've all been pushed. So we mm -hmm. you survive after it. But it's almost like, oh, OK, now I get it. <laughs> um, so. Is this uh, crossroads in Maya's career? is uh is is it time is it time in is it time for maya to make the change is now a good time for maya to make it say no is june 1st a good time for maya to take to make a change in her career yeah is uh march 1st a good time for maya to take a change make a change no, I don't know if you could see that. It's just I can tell when it changes direction. Um, is and this April first? April is April first a good time for Maya to make a change? Yep, yep, yep. Some wait, wait, maybe like six more weeks, and um, or you know, prepare for the for the change and whether you're looking for a new job. But it looks like uh, the change is coming in about six more weeks, but trust that, trust that when, when we get a download or we get a hit or we get an idea or an inspiration from our spirit guides, angels, and loved ones, it doesn't mean 
jump now, right now, today. It means move in that direction. It means consider those um, that possibility and and move in that direction. You know, um, yeah, that's what I have. Well, what what I got is to basically get busy. Uh, and what they mean by that is they're saying, get your resume in line, get things updated, get it ready to make the move. Because even if you're getting a promotion within your current company, you're going to need to submit a new resume to them. Um, and they're also suggesting that you do some manifestation, like maybe may, write a few lines, a few notes about what you want in your career. And write a few notes about what you want in your household. Um, the other thing they want to tell you, because they're they're over there like clapping, and the, it's like a little party over here in your spirit guide world. They're they're your biggest cheerleaders. Okay, they are really happy, but they they don't want you to just sit around and wait for a sign. They want you to do a little bit of manifesting, do it, you know, help them by guiding them a little bit. Like what, what do you want? And just remember that you are important and they're your biggest cheerleaders. They want you to succeed. So help them by letting them know what, what you want. Um, they're saying no ways are blocked to you. No <laughs> ways are blocked. Hmm, that's nice. Beautiful. Okay. That's Beautiful. I, so Maya I says, I was supposed to start at the end of last year and been waiting for a background check to be completed. Well, maybe this is what they mean by divine timing. Yeah. Maybe. Maybe. Trust trust and, in the divine timing. Mm -hmm. Right. And maybe she should give them a call and say, what's up? Or how much longer? You know, you, you can be your own advocate too. Mm -hmm. So. Okay. Well, thank you, Mia. I want to give a quick little shout out to Fern. Hi, Fern. Nice to see you. Thanks for being here. Okay. Let's see what we got here. Ooh. Okay. Let's let's go to Rishi. Hi, Rishi. It's always nice to see you here. Um, Rishi would appreciate a reading to know about his spiritual gifts. Uh, he feels like he, I don't know what they are. Yeah, I would highly recommend um, Medium's Kim's classes. Um, that is a wonderful way. She has a, has a mediumship class, and it's me. It's a beginner mediumship class, and she goes through all of your clairs. And this is where and how we find out uh, where our strengths are and uh, going through all of our clairs. And it's um, clairvoyance, claircognizance, clairsentience, clairalulance, you know, all your all your senses, uh, um, you know, clairs, what did I, I did say clairsentience is how you feel. Um, and, and, wow. and begin working with the with the sense with the Claire that is the strongest once you go through all the different Claire's and um, and then from there you can practice like very um, mundane unimportant type of uh, questions and like um, I don't know. Like if you walk into a store, you say the person in the store is going to be wearing a blue shirt and you say if they're going to be wearing a blue shirt. Or if you hear somebody that the that the person in the store is going to have a really low voice and the person uh, in the store, you know, whatever. If you hear the low voice or if you see the shirt or if you, you know, um, I don't just try and do little practices uh, for yourself. And um it, we all have all clairs. It just depends on which ones we want to bring forward or which ones come a little bit more naturally to us. Like my sight and my uh, feeling, my clairsentience, and then my clair knowing and my clair sight, <clears throat> clairvoyance. Uh, 
Um, they pretty much all work together, but none of them are ever gone. Like I still can hear things, but not always audibly. It's a long story, but yeah. yeah. So what do you have to say there, Jerry? Well, you know, I, I got something very similar in that they didn't necessarily want me to tell him what they are. He, they, this is part of your journey. This is part of the journey. It's it's actually kind of fun because you get to go look for these things and find out. And if you kind of think about back at your life, you may discover some of them. It may be that you realize when you're in a big crowd of people suddenly you know things about people that you didn't uh they didn't tell you you know um and so that that's part of it so i again was a student of medium kim copeland's claire classes i she is a lovely teacher and it's really great um the other thing and i i'm sorry jean i feel like i'm stealing a page out of your book Get a pendulum. This is a great way to start with all of your uh, senses is, is start using a pendulum. Start consulting the pendulum. Maybe even, you know, make a, you know, write it down, make a guess. I think this is what I sense it should happen. And then ask the pendulum or um, just find different ways to, to um, work on it with others. Uh, there's so many fun games you can do, spiritual games to kind of develop your senses and see what's going on. Um, I did notice she said something. I do hear specific parts of songs. And it seems like messages from spirit become, because a situation pops up where the song makes sense or helps him face a situation. Um, well, that definitely happens. So you do know you're in touch. So here you go. You already know you're in touch with your psychic senses. And this is one of the ways that they talk to you. So uh, wouldn't you say, Jean, he's probably Clara Audient a little bit. Absolutely. It's probably one of your dominant traits because you're using it now before you've even hardly explored. So. <laughs> mm -hmm. Absolutely. For sure. For sure, Rishi. And, you know, it's um, a lot of people are like seeing numbers. Any types of synchronicities are a, a way to understand that your self-awareness is opening up and you're remembering who you are and how to use these gifts. All of us here um, can do the same thing. And um, it's really it's it's the change in the times. And they say that that um, we'll remember life you know, before a certain point and life after a certain point because of how different and uh, that we are incorporated with our spiritual self and our um, our connection with our guidance. Um, and we'll be like, how did we ever do it before we knew all this? And it's not just us. It's not an elite crowd. It's not a, a minimum uh, portion of society or, or the world's population. It's going to be more and more and more. And I think it's more than 50% right now. And it's up to us to incorporate this into our everyday lives and to treat it as uh, just another scent. Like if we can see with our eyes and we can hear with our ears, then we can listen to spirit too. Like it's almost like, it's almost like you know, if we're given these things to navigate life, why wouldn't we be given the, the, the guidance to navigate life? We are given the guidance and it's just remembering and allowing that, that open uh, communication to occur. Right. I, I also want to add on to that for everybody listening. One Claire is not better than the other. Um, they're all valuable. And it really you know, because I've heard some people say, oh, I want to be clairvoyant. I want to see everything. Well, you know, I'm not clairaudient. I'd like to hear everything. I mean, I hear once in a while. We all do have them. But so just remember, it's not one isn't better than the other. They're all interesting. They all have a way of, of connecting to the other side and bringing forth knowledge that you wouldn't otherwise have. So a different way of knowing. Okay, well, well thank you for that question, Rishi. That's a fabulous question. And I think a lot of people uh, 
wanted to know that. Mm -hmm. okay, I think so, so too. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. We are getting to the hour and I have one, two, three, four questions. Um, we probably can't do all four. So uh, if, if the people, in the, I'm going to read your names and just say, yes, I'm here or something so that I don't um, waste too much time. So MEJ, Sonia Pinola, EH, I'm particularly interested in EH because you are on in the UK, and T Lynn, who, uh, please uh, say yes or hi or something in that, well, Sonia's here. That's good. So let's go with Sonia because and she's here. Terry Lee saying, hey, beautiful ladies. <laughs> she's, oh, and hello to everybody in the chat. She's been watching the show while she's getting ready to go out. Well, good for you. Good for you. I hope you have a nice time out. And thanks for stopping by. Yeah. Um, and we'll remember, we'll, we'll be on with her on Friday. <laughs> you so. just took the words right out of my mouth. I'm like, oh, yeah, and we'll be there. We'll be with, we'll be with Terry. Theme. Pardon? It's a special show on Friday uh, because it's a themed show. Do you, do you want to tell everybody what the theme is? It it's spirit animals. We're going to be talking about spirit animals and doing questions about spirit animals. It's going to be lots of fun. Yeah, it's going to be really cool. Okay, here is Sonia's question. If time allows, do my guides see any changes for me with my living arrangements? And if so, do they say a destination? Please and thank you. Well, it would, I, if you had like two, if you said either Chicago or Texas, we'd probably be able to tell you which area is more favorable to you with your energy. I'm not sure if we would be able to pick out a destination for you, Sonia. It's a little hard to do it open-ended that way, not unless there's something that, that you're getting right away, um, Terry. But um, let me just see if they see any changes for this year. I'm getting a no for changes, but it's a very small no. It looks uh, more favorable next year, maybe in in uh, maybe in like um, twelve to eighteen months is what it looks like. I'm not sure about a destination though. All right. Is she wants to know is a place with mountains? Is that good for is that in favorable to Sonia's? Yep, I'm getting yes, mountains for sure, because it, it'll it'll heal you and your energy as well. Those majestic mountains are very magical. Yeah, I would agree. The mountains feel really good to my spirit that it feels like it's a good place for you. But I do hear get your get your um get everything in order. Get ready for this. You know, make sure your your finances are in order. Make sure anything that can be made to be ready for a move is ready for the move. Um, because they're saying you don't want to get there and then have a lot of surprises. Um, Um, they're also uh, reminding you that um, there is some effort on your part. In other words, it's not going to be like a magical thing that they're suddenly going to, poof, you're here. It, it, there is some effort on your part because you are the one in charge of this life. And I know we all kind of don't want to hear that, <laughs> but that's, that is the truth. You're in charge of your own move. You're in charge of all of this. And I, since it seems like they are putting you off to next year, get things in order. Do the very best things you can do to get in order. And um, with mountains, for this could be complete bias on my part, complete bias on my part. But I'm thinking West Coast, but I'm on the West Coast. So, and I love our mountains. So, and there's lots of them out there. Yeah. Sounds yeah. beautiful. All the best to you, Sonia. 
Yeah, thank you, Sonia, for the question. And we're going to go to EH because there might be a very large time dis um, difference. I don't want to lo lose EH. So good evening from the UK. May I have a message from my spirit guides, please? I feel as though you've been through a lot in your lifetime, EH. It's almost like you've um, you've weathered the storm is what they're saying. It feels like you have um, been through it, so to speak, and you're on the other side now and you are sort of um, you're it's it's almost like you 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 look at it as um just a natural part of life like uh like it was a whirlwind whether you got married got divorced had kids and and you know all you never know i mean things happen every day it's like a whirlwind and now perhaps maybe you're no longer married and the kids are all grown and moved out and now you have this new page in your life that all of that um turmoil and you know a lot of times when our kids are coming up our our parents are are aging and it just seems like everything sort of hits us all at the same time at a certain age and uh i feel as though you're you're past a lot of these hurdles or a lot of these um uh, challenging times in your life and you're feeling as though either what to do now or it, or is it really over? I feel as though there's the storm has quieted for you and I've, and that perhaps your soul and your, uh, you're, you're going to be paying a little bit more attention to yourself uh, moving forward and in a good way, nurturing yourself and doing things that make you happy and maybe beginning a hobby or having like a, a small side job that really brings you joy. I um, immediately, the second I tuned into your spirit, I immediately saw somebody walking on an outdoor path and reaching down to the ground and the grass was just luxuriant. It was beautiful and just picking up a four leaf clover. They immediately saw it, picked it up. I can only see the hand and the foot and the leg and they, picked it up and I just got this overwhelming feeling of everything's going to be all right, um, that you're a little lucky and that maybe it's time to start a practice of gratitude, maybe thanking them for what they're doing for you. And then I thought, well, Terry, what if you're just, what if you're just imagining it? What, what if this person is is not, what if the person doesn't like the being outdoors? What if they were in the city? And my guides shifted the view to the city and saw you walking on a, on a, you know, cement path and reaching down and picking up a four leaf clover that was poking through the cement. And I'm like, huh, okay, well, what, what if she lived in the desert, you know, or he lived in the desert? What if this person lives in the desert? And I saw you picking up a, a, an ankh, a hidden some something that a, a archaeologist would like to dig up, but something that was golden and represented, I don't know, luck, happy. I mean, it just it was like a special find. So I think well, you have to interpret it how this is speaking to you. But I have a feeling you're far luckier than you think. And I think it's time to start a whole practice of gratitude, like waking up and thanking the universe for the wonderful life you have. And I think the more you do that, the more you will see the wonderful parts. Um, at any rate, no matter where I placed you, you are blessed. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 
Okay, well, that's that's what I got. What a beautiful image, her finding the unk. It's like uh, her dreams are going to come true and she's going to find the treasure or find the, the answer or find the, the, the happiness that she's looking for. Yeah. And that just gives me chills. It, it just gives me chills. She says, that's wonderful. I've been thinking about a gratitude practice and this is very meaningful for me. Thank you. I appreciate it. You're welcome. Welcome. Thank you. Well, Jean, we have taken up all the time, all the time, <laughs> and it's time to go. Um, it was so much fun reading with you. Thank you for for being here, and and uh, thank you for. I I know people might not think of it, but our spirits and the way we vibrate kind of keep us both up. So she helps me, and I help her, and it it just is so wonderful. It's a pleasure reading together. Absolutely. It certainly is. So uh, where can we catch you next? Well, I'll be on Friday um, with um, Terry Lee and you yeah. with uh, my pure visionary. Uh, my The psychic triad will be on Friday and that's the next time that I'm on. Um, and then after Friday, I have um, Sunday, the 25th, I have Valerie from Illumination Portal, who is an amazing astrologer and psychic medium. And we tried doing something last time. If anybody hasn't seen it, go over to my channel and look for Valerie's. The last, we did it like a month ago. And we were doing readings based on what she was telling me about the plan or about the signs that you guys were you know, something sun, something moon and something rising. And she would tell me what that meant. And then I would do a reading on it. It was so oh, much was, fun. It was, so fun. It's fun. like a whole new way of doing a reading. It was so much fun. And we were laughing. I was crying. So go back and, and watch that show and let us know if you want to do it like that again. Yeah, it was, cool. it was so it was, and you know what, that's, if we can't have fun, why, you know, and this is what we want you to do. Find something that, that really makes your heart sing, things that make you, uh, that you really enjoy that, that, um, and this is this, these are the things that, that we try and be an example of. And we like to do things that are fun, that are uplifting, that are in, uh, incorporate or include the community here. And to be a, um, a group or a co community that uh, learns together and laughs together. And it's yeah. so much fun. Yeah. You're forgetting one other time you're going to be on. You're going to be on tomorrow with me. Um, oh, I do. I did forget. I don't have it on my schedule. <laughs> I, uh, every Tuesday at 3 p.m. Pacific time, um, I have started an Akashic healing ser series. And tomorrow at 3 p.m. Pacific, we're going to be healing on forgiveness, self-forgiveness, forgiving yourself for things. I Maybe later they'll talk about forgiving others. But right now, it's just it's going to be about self-forgiveness. And this so. is this is Terry's show, and I'm going to be her hype girl. I back her up. So, yeah, it's Terry's mm -hmm. show. That's probably why I forgot. Gene is the best wingman <laughs> on, on YouTube. <laughs> she makes it so easy, and she throws up. She has all these little signs to let you know where we're at in the process because it's kind of a kind of a process. So, yeah. Yeah. yeah, it's a lot of fun. You guys have to come by and and uh, and visit with us. And if you want to get a sense of what the show is like, you can go back to last Tuesday. We did a show together and it was our debut um, uh, for the series. And it was it was really very magical. So uh, go back and, and watch that and we'll see you guys again right back here tomorrow. And uh, it'll be lots of fun. Yeah. Okay, well, thanks, everybody. Thanks for coming by and staying with our show. Bye. Bye.